Was it friendship, drug addiction, or music that brought Iggy Pop and David Bowie together? From a bond that went beyond labels and became rooted in mutual inspiration, these two might have really been each other's doppelgangers. When David Bowie died on January 10, 2016, Iggy Pop revealed to the New York Times that Bowie was a huge influence on his life and had, as he describes, resurrected him. They met in 1971, and Bowie helped him produce Raw Power, the third album, released by Iggy Pop's band The Stooges. By 1974, though, their drug use, heroin for Iggy Pop, and cocaine for Bowie had negatively affected their lives. After the Stooges fell apart for the second time due to Pop's heroin use, he checked himself into the Los Angeles Neuropsychiatric Institute, a mental health facility where he received psychological treatment. Pop later recalled in David Bowie, The Golden Years, By 1975, I was totally into drugs, and my willpower had been vastly depleted. But still, I had the brains to commit myself to a hospital, and I survived with willpower and a lot of help from David Bowie. I survived because I wanted to. Afterwards, Bowie invited him to tag along on his Isolar tour in support of his album, Station to Station. They then moved to West Berlin together to kick drugs and revitalize their work. Pop admitted in a 1990 MTV News interview that in the wake of the Stooges' breakup and before Bowie got him back on his feet, he'd essentially become a street person in L.A. It was really timely that he suggested basically two things. Those two things were getting out of L.A. and working on an album together. Iggy Pop believes that the move out of L.A. and Bowie's suggestion to work together on Pop's next album ultimately saved his career. While living in West Berlin, the two musicians traveled to French and German studios to record their albums. Iggy Pop released The Idiot and Lust for Life, while Bowie composed his famed Berlin trilogy of Low, Heroes, and Lodger. Each of these albums has attained classic status, and from then on, the two remained friends. Musician and writer Lenny Kay, who was friends with both men, told The New Yorker, I think Bowie saw in Iggy a kind of weird doppelganger. The records they made in Berlin pulled them both out of this pit that they dug themselves into. What drew David Bowie and Iggy Pop together had as much to do with their differences as it did their similarities. Pop had a raw and rugged persona and an underground cachet that Bowie didn't. As Pop said according to David Bowie's Low, I wasn't executive material. I couldn't do the things he seemed to do so well and so easily. Yet I knew I had something he didn't have and could never have. I feel there's a certain tension involved. I can't, I can't really write or produce much if I'm in a place that's, that's relaxing. For Pop, it was Bowie's British sense of showmanship and theatrics that drew him in. The first album recorded during this traveling period was Iggy Pop's The Idiot, which became a way for David Bowie to hone his sound before putting out an album of his own. As Bowie recalled, per David Bowie's Low, poor Iggy Pop, in a way, became a guinea pig for what I wanted to do with sound. I didn't have the material at the time, and I didn't feel like writing at all, so that album was opportune creatively. This was because Iggy Pop's solo career was non-existent, so he could take the risks needed for Bowie to experiment. While they worked on the song Nightclubbing, though, the two came to a disagreement. Bowie wanted to replace the Roland synthesizer with a real drummer, while Pop wanted it to stay. Bowie explained he couldn't put out a sound like that, but according to You Discover Music, Pop said he could. The album exploded, influencing Joy Division, Susie and the Banshees, and Nine Inch Nails. This prefigured the post-punk sound that would emerge in the next couple of years, and it allowed Bowie to experiment further in his own work. David Bowie not only produced Iggy Pop's first solo record, but he also co-wrote all the songs and played many of the instruments. Pop returned the favor by providing backing vocals on Bowie's album Low. Both had received their own resurrection, and their friendship continued as their careers diverged. When Bowie died, Pop paid tribute to their relationship on Twitter, writing, David's friendship was the light of my life. I never met such a brilliant person. He was the best there is. If you or anyone you know needs help with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.